Okay, Winston, what do we have here? What came in the mail? Let's check this out. Oh, it is gonna be my shifter knob. Very cool. Let's open this up. So, my shifter knob came in. That's all I wanted for the Mustang, but for free shipping, I had to spend over $75. So, got a little bit extra. Why not? What do we have here at the bottom? Oh no, not a catalog. How many times have I said I don't want a catalog? The website always asks me, you want a free catalog? The answer is always no, I don't want a free catalog. Oh, this is trouble. This brings back some bad memories. Hi, Miss Robinson. I'm raising money for my soccer team. I could do your lawn, pool, gardens, whatever for uh, $20 an hour. Sir, can I, can I mow your lawn? Uh, you know, I, I, I'll mow your lawn five bucks. I swear I won't spend it on car parts. You don't got five bucks on you? Oh, dang. Oh, dang. Hey, so we are back. Uh, let's cover now how to not lose money with cars. Okay, so we all know that the value of cars goes down with time. Uh, but this video is all about how to not lose that extra money with cars and maybe even make some money with cars. Whether you have an old muscle car, a JDM, or a new truck or sports car, it is easy to get carried away and spend all our rent, mortgage, or, you know, poodle food money on car parts. And I'm here to help. So here are about 10 ways to not lose money with your car or truck. First of all, if you buy new, obviously the value of your vehicle will go down with time, but don't uh, don't go ahead and upgrade or modify it unless you plan on keeping it for a very long time. You know, simply put, when it comes time to trading in your car or truck, you're not going to get extra money for those upgrades. And, uh, you know, depending on your upgrades, you might actually lose money. It might actually take value away from your vehicle because, you know, what you think might make your car or truck look better, uh, you know, might really go out of the norm and be seen as kind of horrendous to someone else. So, whether you're selling it yourself and you have less people coming to see it or you're trading it in, uh, you might quite possibly be getting less money for your vehicle than you normally would because it's been modified. So as seen in the intro clip, it is easy to get carried away with upgrading or repairing a used vehicle. Uh, in 2005, I was paying for school or well, I should have been paying for school, but instead I got a little carried away modifying a Toyota MR2. Um, it all started when someone rear-ended me at, the, at a red light. Uh, instead of just changing the back bumper, I figured, hey, while I'm there, uh, you know, this parts catalog, which is showing me bumpers, also shows me a full body kit. So I put on a full body kit, but then of course, the cost of that was higher. Then I had to paint the full body kit. And well, then my car looked really aggressive. So I had to get, you know, racing seats. And then I felt, well, I have to get a racing steering wheel. So that fits with it. And well, then I said, now my car looks fast, but isn't fast. So I guess, I, I guess it's kind of justified to rebuild the turbo so that it's bigger and better and do a fuel rail and do fuel injectors and put on a more powerful fuel pump and put in an AEM computer and uh, headers and a full exhaust system and why not just polish up polish up the intake manifold, uh, which at least that I did myself and I did a full custom exhaust myself. So I did save money, but it still uh, ended up being pretty expensive. And well, then of course I needed, you know, more air coming into the engine. So I got those fancy little air scoops on the roof that bring air to the back engine to the MR2. But you know what? I can't list everything I put into it, but in the end, I had over $10,000 of modifications or, you know, repairs, justifiable repairs uh, into that vehicle. Now, for any of you uh, muscle car or muscle truck people out there, uh, I've also done this with a 1978 Ford F100. Uh, you know, I, I picked it up and I, there's a story behind how I picked that up too, because I actually saved money picking it up. But then I ended up doing a full r rotisserie paint job on it, meaning uh, the body was taken off the frame, the frame was sandblasted, the whole frame was repainted. Uh, and then really the whole truck, all its body panels were repainted as well. And then everything was kind of put back together. Now, uh, issue. Uh, I didn't get carried away with the motor because all I did for that is headers, a camshaft and some, you know, pretty aggressive racing heads. Uh, but you know, the rotisserie paint job cost $7,000. And when I went to sell it, I sold it for 
$8,000. So that $7,000 paint job, when I'm selling, when I ended up selling for $8,000, well, I'm the one who ended up getting uh, spun and burnt on a spit roast. So it wasn't even a slow cook. I lost thousands of dollars in a matter of minutes. So, you know, this guy got burnt pretty badly. And that's, you know, I always want to help because I've made a lot of mistakes and I've also made some good moves. And over time, I've learned from my mistakes and also, you know, my, my, my good moves where I have made money with cars. So number three, when buying a used vehicle, bring an engine code reader. It can be a basic $60 reader, but those codes, uh, once checked up with a little Google search, will let you know if you should buy the vehicle or not. And you know, they're almost always gonna code something. So when those codes pop up, ideally not just in front of you, but also the vehicle seller, heck, you might not even have to say anything. Keep your mouth shut and they might just offer oh, you actually a bit of the story behind the F100, the 1978 F100. When I got it, it was in rough condition. And I got there, I drove an hour and it was supposed to start up and it didn't start up. Now, of course, this was a carbureted engine, uh, so there weren't any engine codes to, to, to pull. But on a carbureted engine that doesn't start, that's like having, you know, the new computerized vehicles read a whole bunch of engine codes and the seller gets scared. And while well, this seller got worried and said, hey, you know what? Take, take it off my hands and I'll take $1,500 off. So right there, I'd already somewhat negotiated the price of the vehicle before showing up based on the photos. And you know, they threw in $1,500 less. And an hour later, well, Julie and I, Julian and I were just huffing it down the road, pretty pleased with what we had found. Number four, when buying used, don't just assume a clean car means a good car. Some are great at washing and horrible with maintenance and repairs. So this leads to number five, check for odd colored exhaust as blue means that there's, you know, the pistons, uh, the piston rings are uh, worn, broken, uh, and that's a big issue. And black means that the vehicle is burning oil and uh, you, you want to avoid that unless it's a Honda Civic. For some reason they can burn oil for God, hun <laughs> thousands and thousands of miles. So number six, check under the hood for sweet smelling odors uh, because a sweet smelling odor means that, uh, well, likely the radiator fluid is gonna be mixing in with the oil and that can be disastrous, that can be catastrophic uh, engine failure. So number seven, speaking of oil, check the color of the oil because if it's sort of like a milky brown color, well, that means the radiator fluid definitely is mixing in with that oil and once again, avoid the vehicle. You're, you're gonna lose thousands of dollars with it. Number eight, you know, it can be tempting. The car, let's say the car is perfectly clean, there's no rust, um, but still, test drive the vehicle. Just because it looks great doesn't mean it is great. So test drive it. Make sure there's no weird odors, no weird noises, and no odd vibrations. Now, odd vibrations can often be uh, fixed up pretty easily, but if you really like the vehicle at that point, maybe you wanna take it and have it professionally inspected. Now, you don't wanna have every single vehicle you go and shop be professionally inspected because let's say you look at five to 10 vehicles before buying, well, if you had them all inspected, you'd, be in, you'd end up spending anywhere from you know, 500 to $1,500 inspecting these vehicles and usually inexpensive, Mechanical inspections means they do not go that far and in depth with it. I've once paid for a hundred dollar inspection uh, by the person I was trading with by their request. And you know what? Their vehicle turned out to be deemed quite good. And well, the motor blew three months later, so it couldn't have been all that great. And I should have known uh, there was a bit of ex uh, blue exhaust on this. I my natural intuition and my natural knowledge ended up turning out to be better than what I got from that $100 mechanical inspection. You know, on paper, you know, the vehicle was deemed quite good and it really was not. So I think follow these rules and you're gonna be saving yourself a whole lot of money. Number nine, you know, make sure the frame or underbody is not rotten because these are things that will send a vehicle to the scrapyard. Hey Winston, you wanna present number 10? Yeah, okay. Number 10, the 10th and probably the most important way to not lose money on a new or used vehicle is to stay away from the parts catalog. Oh, is it, can it, can we ever get carried away in there? So it is so easy to get carried away. And in 2005, you know, car show popularity was at its peak and it was so easy to get carried away back then. But you know what? Now, if you're getting a new Bronco, 
this thing or you know or a Wrangler people get pretty uh, excited about Wranglers too if you have one of these really popular vehicles it's going to be a car show wherever you go you stop at the gas station and you're gonna have people come out asking you questions and circling your vehicle you know when with all that attention it's awfully easy you know to get carried away with hey you know I'm going to throw on this part this is going to look really cool I'll do this accessory or that accessory and with new vehicles parts cost so much this is part of the reason why I love my 94 Mustang. I can pick up parts, you know, for example, a chin uh, lip for underneath the front bumper. I got that for $57. On my 2018 Mustang, I'm looking at about $350. So the Bronco, when it first comes out, it's not the best time to start modifying it. The parts are gonna cost five times as much as they will in 10 to 12 years from now. So I'd say, the Bronco's fantastic. When it comes out, just enjoy it. Few people are gonna have them and they look great on their own. So I hope you don't get carried away. Uh, I'll, I'll try to get a little carried away for you and you can live vicariously through my Bronco, but I'm still gonna make some smart, intelligent modifications because if I do go to resell it in a year or two, I would like to be able to sell it for more than what I owe on it to have a little positive equity on my next vehicle. So just to summarize, you know, whether you're getting a Jeep Wrangler or you're getting a Ford F-150 truck or whatever truck, or you're getting even better, the brand new Bronco. These vehicles are going to hold their value. Your monthly payments on them uh, are going to make it so that when it, you do go to sell it in a year or two, uh, it's pretty certain that what the vehicle is going to be valued at is going to be higher than what you owe. So that difference between what you owe and what it's worth let's say it's whether it's a thousand dollars or maybe in the case of the bronco five six thousand dollars meaning you, you might actually get away with having it for a year or two and actually not having it cost you anything per month but that's all going to be thrown away to the wind if you spend five to ten thousand dollars on modifications because no one is going to pay you five to ten thousand dollars more for the vehicle just because the modifications are there so you know I'm, I'm gonna take you all to my happy place. That's the Mustang garage. We're gonna go jump in, see what's going on with the 94 Mustang. Julian's gonna let us know. Julian's gonna help fix up this uh, uh, Mustang. Into its place, and that's gonna help your drivability as That'll well. That'll help the ignition a whole lot. Definitely. And, there's and it's corrosion. the plug that's messed up? It's the pin that was slid back, so it wasn't making a nice contact. Okay. With your pin, look, your pin's all corroded. Oh, okay, so we're back in the Mustang garage and we've got the 94 Mustang behind us and I've had a bit of an idling issue. So Julian told me what parts to pick up. So of course Julian's here with us today because my skill level, skill level suits me more to installing the shifter knob that I got off uh, American Muscle. Well, we've got uh, Julian here who is going to take care of that whole coil thingy, ma magic thingy to make the car idle just right. Take hey it guys, so when we're dealing with an older car like this, you know, this car is a 94. so. Eh, you know, I'm born in 91, right? So you get into electronic parts like this. This is called the ignition coil and it's the age of the car. And if you can get right down there and see, there's corrosion in there and these will wear out over time. Now this won't create a high or low idle issue, but this could cause like an intermittent uh, misfire. This kind of uh, cause all kind of drivability issues, poor power, economy, weird little things like that. And they can be extremely intermittent, especially if you have corrosion on the pins like this. So what you have to do is you have to put in a nice new one like this from Excel, great little product, and just clean your pins off, make sure that they're really, really clean. And if they need to be replaced, go ahead and do that. Now is the time. You don't want to get halfway down the, the road to where you're going and realize that you had to change those pins. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll install it and we'll see how she runs. So we'll let the big guy do all the bigger work and well, I'll just go do the, the knob. You probably will finish before me, even though I'm just taking care of the little knob. Now, of course, this isn't something that's uh, really necessary, but when I go to resell it, I think just little touches, instead of having an old worn out knob, having a nice knob, having, you know, I'm gonna be painting the interior trim uh, because it's all getting scratched up. So a lot does come down to aesthetics because a lot of people unfortunately think a car is good if it's aesthetically good and then don't worry about the rest. But that's why I've got Julian, that's why he's got his fancy uh, engine code reader. And uh, well, we, we look at that before we buy a vehicle.